Okay. Welcome everybody. My name is Mina Jane and I'm the director of the Na Ashland Public Library in um, Ashland, Massachusetts. And I'm here with Jody, AKA Red Read Reviews, um, talking about her reviews that of books she's loved in the, I would say the last month, but also her entire life. So um, I want to thank the friends of the Ashland Public Library for supporting this program and our partnering libraries who um, help me make library magic. So Jody, take it over. Hi. So I have, um, I've got a pretty good list of things that are coming, just came out this month or coming out that I wanted to start with. Um, so I'm sure all of you are familiar with the Little Free Library. And um, there are certain publishers that do um, drops. They send out a bunch of books to influencers and ask you to do like a little free drop library drop day. And I am partic participating in one tomorrow. And it is actually for the book, Listen for the Lie by mm -hmm. Amy Tintera. So this book was a really, really good. So far, this, this publisher, every time they've done um, a little free library drop, the book has been good even if it's not one of my genres that I like to read um I found that they they pick them they know how to pick their their writers I'm pretty pretty excited about it um so listen for the lie is about um a woman named Lucy she has amnesia so I'm gonna start by saying that the amnesia thing I hate books with that I avoid them I avoid coma books I just think that they're overdone they're boring they're mostly not believable um so I went into this book with a bad attitude <laughs> putting that out there uh so Lucy has amnesia from a traumatic event that happened five years ago and her best friend was murdered on the same night where she had her trauma um and she has become the main suspect of her best friend's murder which is pretty traumatic in itself um so she moves away because she's trying to like you know the neighborhood, the town is all on her. It's a must love, per it's a, a incredibly loved person. Um, but so now she has to go back to this small town and their small town mentality um, because her grandma wanted her to come home. So she's, you know, going home only for grandma. Um, and it turns out there's a podcaster in town that is bringing up the case and going back. So podcasters is another thing that I think that podcasts and books have started getting popular in the past, like two or three years, mm -hmm. roughly. I guess that's when podcasts started to get really popular. And the whole true crime investigative, it's a, just another route for the murder mysteries to go um, in books, which I am tending to like. Um, so she has this interaction with this podcaster and then they start trying to dig into this um, that night and her memories and if she can have any memories come up because she claims she doesn't have anything. And it becomes, you know, a whole murder mystery. Everybody in town's a suspect. So... I actually listened to this one and this is going to be, well, actually it's not the only audiobook I'm going to promote tonight, but um, the audiobook was fantastic. Mm -hmm. So um, they have like uh, interlude music. <laughs> if you're going to put music in an audiobook, I'm like sold. If there's people that sing in the audiobooks or if there's a full cast, I'm all about it. Mm -hmm. So in this one, they have when they're going to do the podcast sections of the story they have like little podcast music and there's an introduction and then um it's a separate narrator that does the voice for that and then the, the main story and it's it's really believable uh you, you you really do feel like you're listening to the book and the podcast at the same time the interviews really correlate with what's happening with book it just it sold me i was like the audiobook sold me the book is good but the audiobook sold it so that is my number one um recommendation for this month um so like i said the little free library drop dates tomorrow which mm -hmm. is nationwide so if you have a registered library little free library near you go to one tomorrow see if you can get a copy of the book for free you probably won't be able to get it because every time i put a book in my little free library that is on this drop day it's gone within minutes which is really awesome <laughs> um so that's my first one um oh actually I do have a copy of it I can show you the covers I like to show covers because I am a cover so this is the book um, it's red everybody you must have seen it it's really yeah. popular right now yeah, um, we have it we have it in the library I just saw yeah. it recently but it's always out I mean like it's always out it's like yeah. always on this card to come no, in and how, go out I think it came out last Tuesday I think I shouldn't say um, I, I think last Tuesday was a huge publishing day so there was there's a lot because I think the one that I'm going to talk about next came out last Tuesday um so my next one is end of story by AJ Finn I'm not super into this author 
I was, again, reluctant to read it. Um, but I was on a book tour for it. So they sent me a copy of the book and I'm like, oh, I'll, I'll do the tour. I'll read the book. Um, <laughs> it's like a coveted book. So I'm like, oh, I guess I'll do it. Even though it's like hype and everybody wants it. Worth the hype. So that doesn't happen very often for me. Um, so end of story is by AJ Finn. It is about a famous mystery writer who is dying. And he has um, this sort of pen pal relationship with this woman who was a fan who was writing him. And he wants her to come write his story, uh, his life. Um, not just about the fact that he's a mystery writer. Um, so his wife and son went missing years ago, like decades ago. And he was always suspected of being involved in that. Um, so he wants like his story to come out and while he's telling his story which you know you know it's not really like he's he's like glamorizing things he's a mystery writer so everything's like over the top with him you know there's little secrets in there he's not telling and then you meet the rest of the family and this you know secrets start coming out and um <laughs> this one had i think like two twists that were insane and then the last oh my god that last it's like a reveal twist I don't really know what you would call it it's like an explosion is what I the only way to describe it it was so good and I kind of had in the back of my mind that this is what was going to happen but then I'm like there's no way there's no way and then it happened and I was <laughs> I was listening to this book um at work and I stopped what I was doing and I did a little scream <laughs> where I was like I knew it I freaking knew it and my boss is like looking at me and she's like, oh my God, tell me, but don't tell me because I don't want you to ruin the book for me. And I'm like, like, oh, I can't tell you. I said, but just know that I knew it was going to happen. And I'm so happy that it happened because it works so well with the book. So it has one of those, it's a book that has those moments where you're screaming at the book, you're yelling at the characters and you're constantly trying to figure out who is actually like the killer. Mm -hmm. So, so that was Judy, I have a question for you about this because I've noticed in mysteries and thrillers that because of the twists and the turns and things like that, sometimes they're really engineered, you know, like overly engineered, like mm -hmm. um, fake. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll use a, a TV example. So uh, my, we watch a lot, my husband watches lots of like those FBI and whatever. And it seems like at 15 minutes, they feel like they caught the guy. And then a twist happens and they were like, oh no, that's not the guy. And the same thing happens in half an hour and the same thing happens at 45 minutes, like not consistently, but it mm -hmm. feels like there's a formula there to sort of have these twists. So like, how do you tell the difference between something that is truly like psychologically thrilling and twisty versus something that's super engineered? Or <sighs> that's such a hard question to answer. Um, I think they're all engineered. Mm. I think all authors pretty much go into it with a plan they want you to have your list of suspects they want you to have doubt in all those suspects um you've got to look for the little clues to know if it's going to become a darker thing there's they did like in this this writer there were two tiny itty bitty baby clues like they'll mention a name why is that why is that why is that made even in this story like why why would they write her in if she wasn't important so you got to pay, I pay attention to all those little stupid things that people normally just breeze over like the dog, which the dog could be important, you know? So you, you got to kind of like, you, you pick it out. They put them in there. That's hard, so hard to explain. So hard to explain. It becomes psychological when it becomes like more darker and more, mm, I don't even know how to explain this. Why did you do this to me? I'm sorry. Well, I mean, I guess I think like a really good writer can make you feel like you were right there. Whereas yeah. someone who's not as strong might might make you feel like, Ugh, I've been manipulated yeah, um, or something. Or like this was too, uh, I don't even know. I don't like being, manip I, mm, I don't like to be manipulated. I don't want to be forced to like a book. Yeah. Um, I did just re recently read a book uh, called, it's The Guest by B.A. B. Paris. Mm -hmm. So I've liked all of her books, um, but this book, I felt the book was okay. And then she does this last chapter where it didn't make any freaking sense. That's the thing. It has to make sense. Well, so so she throws this last chapter in. It's kind of like, oh, after everything's happened, well, this really happened, or I was thinking this, or this really happened, or this one person who shouldn't have had 
anything to do with this really was the one that had everything to do with it. And that pisses me off. I was like, I'm reading this and I'm like, if they could have just gotten rid of that last chapter, the book might've been like a four to five star for me, but you ruined it because this, this really had no place in the book. Mm -hmm. It, it would have worked. It would have been awesome if it really, like, if you saw hints mm -hmm. and been like, oh my gosh, that's what she was talking about. This is, this is what really happened. Yeah. But no, it was like out of the blue shocker. And, I, and so they want to go for that shock. They really do, but do it the right way. So it's believable. Yeah. Don't just get, make it an afterthought. Right. Right. Oh, that totally makes sense to me. I just want to remind people who are here, feel free to ask questions in the chat or in the Q&A and we will answer them. So thank you, Jody, for answering that question because it's been bothering me. <laughs> These are the things that keep you up at night. It does. Totally. <laughs> That's why I don't read horror because, you know, we won't talk about me. what keeps me up at night. <laughs> I can't imagine anything horror. that can be keeping you up. <laughs> um, so another book, um that I just got I believe this came out last week as well is keep your friends close by Leah Conan so she's not super well-known author um but I think she has like four books under her belt and I've enjoyed every single one of her books so far they've all been four to five star reads for me um she's just an excellent writer at getting into um a woman's mind and and, and female friendships and you know how unstable they can be. Mm -hmm. um, this is another female friendship type book, um, which, you know, you kind of get over that, that whole setting as well. There's a few writers that can do it, the same theme in every book, but twist it around and make it new. Mm -hmm. She's good at that. So her past four books were very much along the same lines with pregnancies and friendships and things like that. And she's able to tweak them so that they're interesting every every book. So she gets props for that. Uh, so this book is uh, Mary is going through a brutal divorce when she meets this woman, Willa, out of the blue at a park where she's got her kids um, doing their thing and they become best friends. Um, you know, she's... It, friend I don't know if you had that friend that you were obsessed with like when you were younger or like you know you have these relationships with women and they're like you're you click and they're like your soulmate and like you want to do everything together and like they understand you and they get you um so it's kind of that vibe where they're you know even though they just met they're instantly best friends mm -hmm. and then the woman w Willa um ghosts her which is devastating I've been in a relationship with a woman that were uh, the same thing where we were best friends. We got pregnant at the same time. We had, we got married at the same time and she ghosted me. And I was like, I'm kind of still devastated about it. You know, I was just like, why, what did I do wrong? And I never got a resolution. Books give you resolutions. <laughs> <laughs> thankfully, thankfully you find out why she ghosted her. Oh, really? um, otherwise I would have been really ticked. Mm -hmm. I would have been having like PTSD. Um, so anyways, back to Mary is, she moves and she's trying to rebuild her life in a new town and, um, doing this whole joint custody thing with her uh, ex-husband and he ends up getting murdered, which starts this whole murder mystery, unstable, uh, women. And then Willa shows back up. Bad timing, coincidental, um, <sighs> they want she wants the friendships back if my friend asked if my if my friend came up to me I haven't talked to her in like 20 how old are my kids 18 years if she came up to me tomorrow I don't think I would accept her back real quick I feel like 18 years is a long time you know I don't even know that I could even try to let her back in mm -hmm. and Mary in this book is pretty freaking forgiving she wants her back in she because she needs that friendship and and that bond was so tight she felt that it was so important to her um I feel like this is such a relatable book. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm the only one that has obsessive friendships. I mean, I have an obsessive personality, so it might just be me. Um, well, I don't think so. But I, I think that connecting with a reader around some aspects of that too is really important. So like you might not be super obsessive, but you know, but there are aspects of everybody that is. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No. Um, I did recently read another book with the same sort of storyline. Uh, by Car Carola Car Carola Levering. I think I have a copy of it somewhere. That oh, was up there. Um, and that's the same storyline where it's like best friends. They're you know childhood best friends, and then they stop talking because one becomes an Instagrammer, and the other one's kind of like shut out of that lifestyle, and the other one has money, and it becomes this whole like 
but the other one wants that friend back. And I really, <laughs> I felt like I could relate to that because I've been shut out too. So mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm a sucker for female friendship stories. It, I am too. But I do want to ask you a question um, about something you said early on, and you've kind of said it before too, is that, you know, something was four stars or four and a half stars for you. Is the only place that we can find your recommendations like that on Instagram or can, or do you blog or do you have, do you put on Goodreads or do you, how do you, I always, I always put my stuff on Goodreads. Okay. That is like my Bible. I don't know about you, but like when someone (laughs) suggests a book to me, I go on Goodreads and I'm going to, you know, want to read or put it on a list. Um, So I, I have, I have a small following on Goodreads, um, but I do update it every single time I read a book. So mm-hmm. people know what I'm reading. And and I even put, you know, as much as I don't like giving stars less than three, I have done a couple where I've put like the two stars, but then I, I don't, I never bash an author. I can't do that. I refuse mm-hmm. to do that. Right. Um, but I will put in like a two star read really what didn't work for me. And if that's like, you know, something that skews me out, that's my opinion. Mm-hmm. You could love that book, even though it skewed me out. Like parasites, can't do parasites. Found that out. Parasites <laughs> are my no no. Um, and I don't you. believe. <laughs> yeah, we all have our limits. Parasites apparently are mine. Um, yep, yep. I'm a. Yeah. I'm a no. No secret babies. No secret babies. <laughs> Well, <laughs> um, but okay. So we can find you. Obviously, we can follow you on, on Goodreads also. and Instagram. Okay. But yeah, I've tried other platforms, but I'm never going to be a TikToker because the reels are out of my wheelhouse. I suck at them. When I do make them, my daughter laughs at me. <laughs> so I've kind of come to the conclusion that I'm going to be just classic snapshots kind of person. This honestly is as high tech as I'm probably ever going to get. And you know how difficult this was for me in the beginning. The zooming whole thing. I mean. I'm not ancient, but I'm ancient in the technological world. So you have pulled yourself into the 21st century, though. I'm very impressed. So I, I'm, I'm current. I'm hip. Yes, you are. Hey, can I just make a recommendation for, I think I had mentioned to you, I really wanted to mention this book by Amina Akhtar. It's almost surely dead. And um, it's funny and it's murderous and it's great. I think everybody should read it. Her book is been picked by Mindy Kaling for her imprint for this month. So if anybody, and of course the cover's gorgeous. So if yeah, I was just going to say that, good, that cover's an eye catcher. Yeah. Sort of lighthearted, but also murderous re- read. It's a good one. So let me ask you this. Does the cover go along with the book? Do you, do you see where they're going with the cover? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, sometimes I th- that doesn't happen. And that's another thing that ticks me off. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a little bit psychedelic. See that? Psychedelic. So is there, is there drugs involved in this? Like, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> Damn it. You can't give a wee spoiler. I need a wee one. Um, Amina says, because I interviewed her last week, that she likes writing. She liked writing this murder mystery because she was able to murder people that she has worked with in the past. Oh, isn't that every murder writer's goal? <laughs> I, I want to kill all of my enemies and books. I don't write, but if I did, it would be all of my, the people I've disliked, I would murder them and kill them in all these horrible ways. <laughs> well, I just wanted to put that out there. So I, I didn't want to take away from you, Jody, too long. So, oh my God, you're not taking away. We're, it's books. We're about books. <laughs> <laughs> it's a ghost story. I'll tell you that it's a ghost story. Oh, okay. I dig that. Psycholo- I like ghosts. Psychological thriller ghost story. I can dig that. I think I'd be into that. Um, so my next, so last night I was in um, Boston at Quarter Square Books to see um, El Casamano, who is the writer of the Finlay Donovan series. Um, I'm sure everybody, I don't think there's anybody that doesn't know who Finlay is. Um, I actually picked, this was last year, I chose uh, Finlay Donovan is Killing It, the first book in the series. Mm-hmm. Beautiful pink cover. Um, I chose that book for my book clubs at at the library um, for their murder mystery read. Um, And I didn't know how it was going to be received. I have all ages in my book club, uh, some elderly women. I've got some middle-aged women and I've got some young women. It's mostly women. I don't know how that happened. Uh, I didn't cherry pick them. They just show up. Uh, (laughs) And so it was interesting to see because it's kind of like a cozy mystery and I'm like, are we are we doing cozies? Is this what everybody's going to like? And it was the one book I can honestly say out of all the books I've suggested that every single person loved. Mm. They had nothing bad to say about the book. They were hooked, um, which then, you know, 
turned into my librarian ordering all the books in the series. And now we have like a wait list when the books come in, people want the book at not just my book club. And then that actually ended up getting some um, outside people into the, um, for that meeting too, because they wanted to talk about it. Uh, so I'm a huge fan of this writer because she, she brings in the people and she's relatable to everybody. So her newest book, which was what she was promoting last night when I saw her, is uh, Finley Donovan Rolls the, Rolls the Dice. And that is book number, it's like book number four. Their, book number one is Finley Donovan. They're all start with Finley Donovan as the title. Um, the first one is Killing It. Second is Knock Em Dead. Third is Jumps the Gun. And the fourth is Rolls, Rolls the Dice. Um, I've read them I all. Say, I really love that retro cover. <laughs> Isn't it great? All of her, I don't have the other two books, unfortunately, but all of her covers are like super brightly colored. And she was saying last night, she doesn't have a say in the artwork. She doesn't have a really a say in the titles, um, but they nailed it. Like not all publishers get it right. And you know how there's, there's definitely trends in what covers. I remember when I first started really reading thrillers, um, how old is my daughter? About 10 years ago, the big trend was a woman's face, like half of her face or close up of the eyes or like, you know, that far off distant look or the woman, you know, you see her back and she's staring off into the tide. And that was a huge trend. Um, and that lasted about three years. And I think it's still kind of like the tail end of that trend. I think this kind of cover is becoming a trend. It's mm -hmm. eye catching and you you get you really do get the vibe of the story from it because she's like her own caution of the wind and she's going on a road trip with her bestie and they're going to Atlantic City. Um, all of the books have to deal with Finley Donovan, who is a single mom of two kids, and she's trying to make it, you know, parent her kids, and she's a um a mystery writer herself. And well, like a rom romantic mystery writer. Um so it's, you know, she gets involved in some really bad stuff and she's in the dating scene again. And each book follows that storyline with a little bit more. You really do want to read them in order. They could be standalones, but in order to really appreciate Finley Donovan and her best friend, Vero, you really want to read them in order. And they are hilarious. Mm -hmm. This is another one I've done on audio. I own the books. I've never actually read the books. <laughs> I've picked them up. I look at the cover. I touch the covers. I sniff the pages. I look through to make sure I'm getting, you know, the right, the names correctly spelled. But I've only ever done this series on audiobook. And I will tell you that is fan freaking tastic on audio. The narrator, I wish I could remember her name, nails it. She absolutely freaking nails it. She does all the voices and they all sound completely different. Finley's got this distinct voice. And then Vero has this like, husky smokers latino voice and like i'm seeing selena gomez like i you know you you definitely oh and then her agent is it's like do you remember from snl when michael myers was doing coffee talk <laughs> i do yeah, yeah. okay yeah. so that's like, what i picture as sylvia with the big hair and the long nails and and she wants to talk about the book and she wants to talk about where we're gonna take this book it's freaking awesome they like okay. nailed it okay so I have to ask you um I'm a huge I was a huge uh fan of Stephanie Plum um Janet Ivanovich no no I, I, I heard of them have not read them this is my first real cozy oh I wouldn't I don't know if they would they were cozy but they um very 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 funny up to book 12 ish 13 ish now it's like yeah. up to 30 and I'm not I stopped around Holy 18 crap. yeah but it reminds me of that because it was a, it's Trenton bounty hunter, incredibly funny. I mean, there were times I was laughing so hard, but really getting bad that my husband's like, what's going on over there. But, um, yeah, it's, I, but again, it only up to a certain point. Um, and that it, what you're describing really makes me think of that. And so I'm going to have yeah. to get up because I loved, loved, loved that. It, it, it's hilarious. Like there's, there's so many laugh out loud, loud moments and the characters, you fall in love with all the characters, even the bad ones. So you mm -hmm. definitely fall in love with them. Um, wait, wait, Nancy says that she read, she loves Stephanie Plum. She read the whole series. Have you read all the way up to thirties, Nancy? That's amazing. <laughs> is there really that many books and they're yeah, all dealing with the same character? Yep. I think the 30th one is either it just came out or it's coming out this summer, but um, yeah. And like I said, they're very, very funny, but I, I think that's, gonna... that's gotta be like a writer's dream, right? You get 30 books. Well, actually that has to be challenging as well because they've got to make it fresh and new 30 books later. Is it, does it, is it stand the test of time? Like how you've made it to what 12 books? 
Oh, okay. So, she, uh, so Karen, Karen says she, the, uh, the 30th one came out and Nancy read the whole series and liked it. And I say, I got up to like, I said, a 12 because they, it wasn't that the writing got bad or anything, but that the love interest, I was just like, pick somebody, damn it. Pick somebody. <laughs> Okay, so I, I don't that. know what's happening in twenty nine and thirty, but I was like, did she so pick that, somebody? That happens. That kind of happens with Finlay because she's got this, uh, you know, this love interest, and we're like, where is this going? Is this going to become something? And he's becoming more and more of a character, so we're thinking this is going to become something. Um, and but her ex husband is always sort of in the picture, so you know, we're waiting. Mm. We, were, well, we were waiting for them to do it for the longest time. So when they finally did it, we're like finally this happened now that we've jumped over that hope let's move on to the next one yeah nancy says why well, pick one book they're both gorgeous i agree <laughs> yes but, but um, i always read books in order so i can't I have to. to yeah i can't speak to like going into the seventh book or the fourth book or whatever um we just have another four minutes so tell me jody oh, what's my... what next and why does the time go so by so fast i have actually i only have i've got two books left all right i'm going to tell you about an oldie uh, published in 2022 during COVID. So it did not get the hype and it did not get pushed from publishers the way it should have. Um, I think you're familiar with this writer, oh, Bracken yes. McLeod, uh, Massachusetts resident, Closing Costs. This is one of my favorite books. Mm. Uh, it is unnerving and creepy and unsettling. It's um, a home invasion story. And th that's one of my scariest things in the world. I, I've actually been worried about that happening in my own house. Um, I went on anxiety medication when my kids are born because I'm like, oh yeah, someone's definitely going to come in the house and kill us and take my children. So thank God for medication. So he hit all of my fears in this book. Um, and it becomes sort of like a slasher, sort of like hunting down kind of book towards the end. It, it's just so freaking well written. And it's just... <sighs> I think I was like three chapters in and I was already scared out of my mind. Really hard to do with me. It takes a lot to scare me. He hypes the fear up in this. You feel it. I was uncomfortable. I had to read passages to my husband to talk it out. <laughs> <laughs> so that's when you know it's a good book. And again, that's Bracken McLeod. Um, he's also a really awesome person. I've met him several times. I love him. Um, how much time do I have? I was one more? He's an amazing beard, by the way. You have two more minutes. Okay, two more minutes. This one is um a second book um written by i'm gonna say her last name wrong margo do i he yeah <laughs> well if i butchered it and she happens to hide and find out about it i apologize ahead of time so i'm not religious i don't do religion this is the second book in a series about a nun she's a punk rock nun <laughs> she is joan jett as a nun she's gay she smokes she swears and she's a nun it's kind of like sister act but hipper cooler i love her i love it's not it's another one that's considered a cozy i think i'm on a path to cozy mysteries not a good thing i don't i need to stop that um but it's definitely it's it's no not a lot of violence not a lot of blood um definitely potty mouth in there because she's just so awesome um the first book was really really good this one is just as good i haven't put it on instagram yet but I'm, my view is coming this week for it i think this one came out today oh i think it came out today so I really recommend this one, um, but you want to read the first one, which is Scorched Grace by the same writer. Um, and that cover, that cover is a beautiful bright red. This one yeah. is, I mean, if you can see, I don't know if you can see, it's like got the stained glassy look in the back. Mm -hmm. um, the first book has that as well. Mm -hmm. I just think that's sort of brilliant. So that's, that's it. That's all I got for you. <laughs> I was going to say that cover also has that sort of really beautiful art deco look, just yeah. like the Finley Donovan one. Yeah, so, but it, it works with the whole, um, the church vibe with it being like cut up like a um, stained glass. They did a great job. And and the writer is, she's she's a pretty badass human herself. So it awesome book. I hope Cozy Mysteries is not where I'm going. That is not, I'm too hardcore for that. I, I can't do it. I can't become that rom-com. Don't, don't make me do it. It's not going to happen. We won't. In fact, I'm just surprised that you only had one like really hardcore horror book today, but we'll, we'll get back to them. <laughs> <laughs> but Jody, thank you once again for such a great talk. And I will send out the list to everybody who was uh who registered yep. and I'll send you the video link and everybody the video link after um it's up on YouTube. So I will see you next month, Jody, and I hope to see everybody else too. Bye. Thank you. Bye everyone.